Hi, everybody. Um, you know, we had another nice day today. I want to give you a little bit of a recap. So um, some of the frostier cameras this morning, and it was really thick frost in some spots. This is the Oregon Garden camera out in Silverton. They're all decorated for the holidays. This was Camas Meadows Golf Course. That's thick frost on the grass. The coldest temperature this morning was 25 degrees in the Metro Valley or the Willamette Valley, actually. And that was the temperature at the National Weather Service office which is just east of the airport, just east of 205. It was the first morning in a while that the east wind flow out of the gorge basically calmed, went flat, and that allowed temperatures with the clearing we had last night just to nosedive. Very possible that we wake up to a lot of frost again tomorrow morning with widespread freezing temperatures. Now, eventually tomorrow, those east winds will start to come back to life. I think out near the uh, the Columbia River Gorge, but that was a cold, frosty start. Big story: the Mountain Resorts uh, are open. Um, they have limited operations right now due to a lack of snow. Mountain snowpack, where they test it at 5,400 feet, is roughly 40 percent, 40 percent of normal right now in terms of stored water. Quite frankly, I'm surprised that number is not lower. And if we don't pick up some decent storms soon that number will get significantly lower. On the left, this was a shot this afternoon at Timberline. Uh, this is their Bruno chairlift, I believe I have that right. And you can see they've got uh, quite a few cars uh, out in the day parking lot, so some people enjoying. Off to the right, I'm not sure what ski run this is, but look at all the bare dirt uh, in Mount Hood Meadows. And notice the temperature this afternoon was 50 degrees. So not only does Meadows only have a 17-inch base, Timberline has 23, but a 17-inch base of meadows and a temperature of 50 degrees to add insult to injury. Uh, and then I grabbed this just a little bit ago. This is the cosmic tubing, the night tubing open now at Mount Hood Ski Bowl. And they have farmed and kind of maneuvered around some snow in their tubing area. When you get away from the tubing area, they only have an inch to two inches of snow. Um, and they are a long ways, long ways away from dreaming about even opening their ski and, you know, their ski and boarding operations up there. Um, so what is the Mount Hood snow forecast calling for? Courtesy of Hillcrest uh, Ski Shop there in Gresham. Thank you very much. Um, well, back up to 50 tomorrow. Meadows hit 50 today. I think they'll do it again tomorrow. A dry day. Sun, clouds late in the day. And then showers on Monday will be mostly rain showers. This will not be heavy precipitation, but... Again, we just don't need rain. We need snow up there. Uh, snow level seven falling down to 6,000 feet Monday. Down to 5,000 feet on Tuesday. That's still all rain at government camp, but enough moisture that there could be a four inches of wet snow, maybe at Meadows Base, or certainly when you get up above the snow level at Mount Hood um, at uh, Timberline, 6,000 feet. But, you know, that's still disappointing stuff. When we're back to dry on Wednesday, we're back to dry on Thursday. It looks like right now with each day seeing daytime highs above uh, freezing. So um, that is certainly not good news either. Okay, let me um, let me switch gears and let's talk about what's coming up. So here is the um, water vapor imagery and uh, here's we are Oregon and Washington. See the spinning circle right here? Uh, sorry, there's a glitch in the imagery. I can't help that. Um, you could, this is the low that's going to continue to work a little bit closer to California, and it will start throwing some clouds up our way from the south the latter part of tomorrow, Sunday. Give us developing showers as we get into some thicker moisture with this low on Monday. There's a front associated with this that comes through Monday night into early Tuesday morning. But all total over the two days, it's, it looks like we get less than a half of an inch of rain. This is a cutoff system. There's really nothing feeding into it. And I don't have any systems coming in other than this low until a front this coming Friday night. So that's still quite a ways off as well. Um, did I do that? No, here we go. All right. This is going to show you from the GFS model, possible precipitation Monday into Tuesday. So this is Monday morning early. We're still dry in Portland, a little bit of light rain, if this were exactly correct, gathering along the central coast. And then I'll go ahead and play this into Monday afternoon. Here we are at 4 p.m. This shows light scattered rain amounts, everything coming up south to north on Monday, less than a tenth of an inch of rain for Portland and about a tenth of an inch of rain down into Salem. A little bit heavier, but not much really along the coast. Now, there's a front that comes in Monday overnight into Tuesday morning. So here's Tuesday morning. Now we've got some decent 
maize bowl precipitation, four tenths of an inch in uh, Lincoln County. We've got maybe a quarter of an inch of rain in Portland, a little bit more than that down in Salem. Showers continue during the day, Tuesday, and all total. I feel like these numbers are at the absolute top end of what we could get. This shows we've got about a half of an inch in Portland, 56 one-hundredths out in Beaverton, a half of an inch or more down in Salem. I don't really think we get that much, but we'll say this is the top end of possibility. This shows six-tenths of an inch of rain along portions of the coast. So that'd be great if we could get that. Again, snow levels are going to be no lower than 5,000 feet Tuesday as that system uh, starts to come in. I do want to show you what the weather flow pattern is doing. So this is um, Monday. And let me see if I can draw here. I'm trying to get a little bit uh, you know, fancier for you um, with these animations. So again, this is the low right here, right? Uh, this is uh, Sunday afternoon. It will throw some clouds our way up during the afternoon hours. But generally speaking, you know, we... we we don't see thicker clouds until we get all the way into Monday. Um, and now, now I've seen, ah, this gets clunky because now I've got to turn that off. <laughs> all right. Uh, here is Monday afternoon. Right in here. Just look at my mouse. Right in here is a front. That's what's going to throw heavier rain Monday overnight into Tuesday from this low that's uh, approaching into California. Tuesday, we're still getting moisture. But notice how the low drops to our south. And now we're in a split flow on Wednesday. By split, meaning... Here's a southern flow pattern around this low. Here's a, no, a northern, not connected at all, separate flow pattern into Canada. So we're kind of split. And we're dry. I had a chance of showers Wednesday morning, but that looks like the rain's over by then. So we're totally dry Wednesday, totally dry Thursday. Um, Friday, it looks like we have a good chance to be dry during the day. And then some of the modeling starts a rain chance Friday evening. Other models don't really hold that off until more of Friday overnight. There, it was a weak front in here Friday night into Saturday morning, but it goes away so quickly that it's possible that much of Saturday's dry. And then we get into Christmas Eve day. Here's Sunday. Sunday, there is a front back here. We're going to get clouds thrown ahead of it. There's a chance of some rain, not until later in the day. And then if we go into Christmas Day, right now, it looks like there is a front that pushes inland around this big trough. You see the trough offshore. Here's the front that pushes inland. And that would throw some rain our way. I've got Christmas Day, a low of 36 and a high of 47 with rain showers right now. But notice this blue contour that I talk about a lot. This is the cold air. So this is some colder air sitting out of the Gulf of Alaska. But if I play it into midweek, there it is Wednesday of next week, the 27th. There's Thursday, the 28th. Notice how the cold air, now it starts to retreat. And we just never really get much of anything going. Now, I will tell you, that starting this upcoming Christmas weekend, there's a front Friday evening. There's another one Christmas evening into Monday, the uh, Christmas, I'm sorry, Friday evening. There's another one Christmas Eve night, that's Sunday night into Monday, Christmas day. And there are actually several fronts that come in all the way into New Year's day. So that's fairly active um, Christmas weekend into the week going into New Year's weekend. But once we get past that, now I'm playing you into January 4th, January 5th. Now we've got some ridging going back on in the West Coast. Notice how the cold air is way up here with troughing down across the Great Lakes. And we can keep playing this into, here we are, the 10th day of January. Troughing down across the Great Lakes. This is kind of what we have been seeing. Warm ridging over our area. Not as warm as what we've seen so far this month, but still that's a pretty quiet weather pattern. And if I go ahead and play it into the 15th of January, here we are. Well, let me back up. This is the 14th day of January. Did you notice there are no big troughs building out here? This is a pretty quiet, below normal precipitation weather pattern taking hold with temperatures I don't think are crazy warm, but they're not cold. And it's a pretty unactive January overall. To me, that's the way that that, that is setting up. Uh, here's a look at where we have snow on the ground right now in the United States. I'm not sure of the elevation that this picks up. This is clearly showing some snow in the Rockies of Colorado and then some of the mountains over in western Montana. That's the Yellowstone area in Idaho. But otherwise, a shockingly lack of snow over the Great Lakes and not much snow up in New England either. And it still looks like for Christmas weekend, that much of our country is going to be snow-free, which is the way it has looked for a while. In fact, 
here is the European model on Christmas Day. <laughs> Pardon me. Notice there, there's the trough right there that allows a front to come into our area Christmas e late afternoon or evening with rain developing. But then you've got this warm ridging over the upper uh, Rockies of Wyoming and Montana. And you've got, while there looks like there's some precipitation coming with this little trough right here across the Great Lakes, this is not cold air. And this is actually warm air up into the Ohio Valley and warm air up into New England. This cold uh, system down in, not really a cold system, but an active system in Texas looks to be more of an explosive thunderstorm threat than a cold weather threat. So again, you know, if you go back to Thanksgiving weekend, it was overall pretty easy travel. We could have what would be considered pretty mild, easy travel weather-wise over Christmas weekend as well. With all of that said, here's the seven-day forecast. I took a long time to tell you that we get fairly active with some rain showers Christmas weekend through New Year's Day. And then after that, it's pretty quiet again. Uh, tomorrow, like today, some fog, some frost in the morning, partly cloudy, 52. Clouds increase later in the day. We're cloudy Sunday night. We have showers on Monday. We have rain picking up Monday night over into Tuesday morning. But all total, these two days, probably less than a half of an inch of moisture. Then we're back to dry on Wednesday and Thursday. We're back to mild. Temps up into the 50s again, for crying out loud. And then we've got that lane, rain uh, late day Friday. That This could change, but current timing as the rain late day Friday, Friday night, then we're dry on Saturday the 23rd. And then I've got rain developing in the afternoon or maybe not until the evening on Christmas Eve on Sunday the 24th. That's a high 47. And Christmas Day again, some rain showers or rain at times and a high again of about 47. Of course, that's Monday, um, a week from. So, all right. Thanks for listening to my update. I'm meteorologist Rod Hill. I'll talk to you soon.